So just to finish up our blog project, one of the simplest things that we can do to increase its security is not to store our users' passwords as plain text in the database. So we've mentioned this a few times throughout the Node.js Essentials course, but we've never actually created an implementation of it. So here in our blog project, I've created a new file called utils.js, which would be a really handy file where we can put any utility functions that we want to use, such as the one I've created here, which is to hash a password. So there are lots of different options, as we've discussed before, to hash a password. Probably one of the most secure and widely used is bcrypt, but for this example, I've kept it simple and just used the crypto node module to create a SHA-256 hash from a plain text variable that's passed in. So using this function, we can actually go back to our registration endpoint. And once we've actually imported the utils module, we can create a hashed version of the password that the user entered on the registration form. And now instead of passing the plain text password to it be inserted into MongoDB, we can insert the hashed version. So that'll keep our passwords nice and secure within the database, but we need to update our local strategy to actually check for a hashed version when we're comparing the user's password that they've entered into the login form with what we've got stored in the database now. So again, we'll import the utils module. And then in our local strategy, rather than just comparing the user.password, which is what is stored in the database, to the password that's been passed to Passport, we again hash the password that's been provided in plain text and compare it with what we've got stored in the database. So let's go ahead and register a new user and see how that looks. So I've created a new user called secure user and I've given them a password of password123. But if we go to compass to check the document that's been created, you can see we've got our user, but you can't actually read the password because it's been encrypted with our hash password function. But of course the user doesn't have to enter that hash to actually log in. They enter their plain password and the local strategy hashes that and compares it to what we've got stored in the database. So simply entering password123 for that user logs us in and takes us to the page where we can create new blog posts. So it goes without saying that our session keys and secret keys should be kept within environment variables so that they're never committed to your code base. As once a malicious user knows a specific key and the hashing algorithm you've used, they can start to attempt to decrypt any of your database data. So that's it for this lesson, and it brings to an end our final blog project.